Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy of the glory. You are worthy of the honor. You are worthy of the praise, Lord. And we just glorify your name on this Sunday. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Glory to the Most High God, my Savior, my God, my King. Lord, you are the ruler of everything. You are the creator of the heaven and the earth and all that there is. And God, we bow down before you, Lord God. We pay homage to you tonight and say glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the breath of life in our bodies. Thank you in the name of Jesus for waking us up this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us in our right minds. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for us today today and forevermore we just thank you god for all that you have done for us dying on the cross for our sins giving us the breath of life giving us eternal life we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise lord you are worthy of our praise you are worthy of all the glory we honor you, Lord, and we magnify your holy name. Glory, glory, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name and we ask you, God, to wash us and cleanse us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, wash us from every unclean thought and every unclean word and every unclean deed, Lord. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to rectify us even right now, Jesus. Even in what we don't even know we did. Rectify it, Lord. Correct everything, Lord God, in our lives. Lord, make us whiter than snow and clean in your eyes. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, wash us with your fullest soap, Lord God. Your word, your bread of life that you have given to us, Lord God. Wash us, Lord, with your word. Wash us and make us clean tonight, God. Lord, and make us new and restored in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone that's sick and suffering under the sound of my voice. Lord, I ask you, God, to heal every one of us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord God. Whether it be mentally, physically, or spiritually that we have need of to be healed. Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus to heal us, Lord, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, every last one of us in this earth, Lord. Heal us in the name of Jesus, Lord. We need healing from something, Lord God, because there's many things that's coming against us in this earth, Lord, and we need healing from it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace is upon you, Lord. With your stripes we are healed in the name of Jesus. We receive your healing. We receive your deliverance. We receive the victory in the mighty name of Jesus from every dis-ease that's in this land that's coming against the mind, the body, and the spirit of your people, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue that you have sent from heaven to heal our body, minds, and spirit. We believe that we are delivered. We believe in the name of Jesus that we are healed. We believe in the name of Jesus that you have provided for us because you are Jehovah Jireh, God our provider. You are Jehovah Nisi, God. You are a banner. You watch over us 24-7, seven days a week. You're watching over us. You're watching over our minds. You're watching over our bodies. You're watching over our spirit. And God, we say thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you are our divine banner. You are God that is Jehovah Jireh. God, you provide. God, you're Jehovah Nisi. 
God, you watch over us all day long and all night long. You provide for us, Lord, that we have food in the cupboards. Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, you provide that we have jobs that we can go to so that we can pay our bills, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Lord God, you have made the doctors and nurses and the medical staff team to get the necessary education, Lord, to know how to treat our bodies, our mind. But you're the one that treats our spirit, Lord. And you're the one that will touch those doctors and nurses and technicians and all those that work in the medical field, even the housekeepers, Lord, environmental workers, and, and those that work in the clerical areas, in all areas of the medical field, Lord God, you touch them. You give them the, the mind and the wisdom, Lord, on how to treat the patients, Lord God. For that we are grateful. We are thankful for them. We are thankful for those that are standing in those positions, Lord. Yes, God, you provide. You provide medical treatment. You provide financial supplies for us. You provide a place for us to live. You provide the supermarkets for us to buy food. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all you have given to us, Lord, that we can be in this earth and be fruitful and multiplying in, and replenishing the earth with all that you have given to us, spiritually and physically, Father. Lord, we thank you, God, for it's the small things that we are to give thanks for, Lord God, and not to forget about every little thing hallelujah yes we see the big things but we gotta also remember to give thanks to god for every single minute thing that he has done for us and lord we are grateful we are thankful we thank you lord for the healing of the nations we thank you lord for the healing of all the people father god that are sick and suffering and going through we thank you, Lord, for the healing of the loved ones that lost loved ones. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the healing virtue, Lord, that you are sending forth even right now to heal those that are laying on their sick beds that are really going through. We ask you, God, in the name of Jesus, to give us many testimonies that's going to come forth, Lord, of those that's going to take up their beds and walk and rise up and give a testimony of how you healed them, how you delivered them, how you removed the sickness and the disease off of them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the right to bind and to loose sickness and disease and every unclean spirit from the lives of us and our family members in the mighty name of Jesus and those that we come to help, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you give us the authority as believers to bind and loose every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus and to cast them out of God's people and to cast them out of those who are lost and are suffering. We thank you, God, that we are commanding even right now every works of darkness and every wicked spirit in high places hiding. We command them to loose the people that we are connected to from any illness any sickness any disease any poverty any lack we bind and loose those spirits in the name of jesus and we command that the holy spirit rule and reign in our family members in our loved ones in our neighbors in our co-workers and in everyone that we will come into contact with let your holy spirit reign let your Holy Spirit guide, Lord Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit give direction and protection in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let your people be free in the name of Jesus. Who the Son says free is free indeed. Glory to the Most High God. Lord, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you are healing and you are delivering and you are setting people free even right now.
because there's no distance in prayer you are touching your people right now on their beds of affliction and their suffering and those that have lack lord we know you hear their cry lord we know you know what they're going through lord we know lord god that you're going to answer their prayers speedily and you're going to give a change to those that are crying out for help calling on the name of jesus reaching out to the savior the king of kings lord of lords the mighty healer the restorer of our souls hallelujah the soon coming king hallelujah preserve your people while they are waiting for you to return my god reserve a place in heaven for each and every one of them god but give them peace right here oh god from the suffering that's in the earth oh god give them a way out lord god where it seems like no way out lord god lord open doors in the name of jesus where doors have been slammed shut and slam the doors shut that need to be slammed shut that no man can open it to cause disturbance into the lives of your people god in the mighty name of jesus Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're doing the transformations right now in the name of Jesus in those that are crying out to you, in those that are holding on to the horns of the altar, seeking your face right now with their hearts, with their minds, with their soul, with their very being. Because you said we are to seek you with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and all that we have. We are to seek you, Lord, and we're seeking you tonight, Lord, on behalf of the people, Lord God, that are going through, Lord God, in the country, Father. Oh, God, we ask you, Father, even in other countries, Lord, to help those believers, Lord, that's on the firing lines right now. God, those that are suffering, Lord. Oh, Father, we ask you, God, to touch those in Afghanistan. Lord, those in Israel, those all over the world that suffering, Father, in the name of Jesus, those innocent people, Father, we pray for them, Lord. We pray for all the nations, Lord, to come together in unity and in love in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, for healing. We pray, God, for that that COVID-19 will be destroyed in every strain of it in the name of Jesus Lord I pray that your people will not be harmed Lord from this virus I pray for divine protection and healing for your people in the name of Jesus Lord heal the lands in Jesus name we ask you Lord for forgiveness of all the sins of the people we ask you Lord God to make the, the wrongs right Lord God God, stir up the hearts of your people all over the world father and make a change lord and a transformation huh, through your servants through your leaders huh, through your sent and called out ones huh. send them lord god to the north the east the west and the south huh. lord god to herald your holy word huh, all over the world lord god huh, so that people will have you to hold on to huh, so that they won't give up father but that they will have your word huh, and they will hold on to your unchanging hand let your spirit reign in the nations father let your spirit rule lord god in the name of jesus right here in the earth lord god and let the world know lord god that you are the bread of heaven you are the bread of life oh god you are their way the truth and the light and the life that they need is in you jesus christ god we ask you lord god to touch and heal even right now in jesus mighty name save your people lord deliver your people lord in the mighty name of jesus touch the little ones the children father touch the senior citizens lord god touch those that can't help themselves lord touch those that are bedridden touch those lord that have mental illnesses lord and that are mentally challenged lord touch them father give them the strength and the help that they need god lord touch them lord and heal the minds the bodies and the spirit of your people that are suffering in the name of jesus lord god we thank you lord for hearing the prayers right now we thank you lord for touching our family members and giving them 
divine protection, Lord God, from the oldest to the youngest. Let no harm or danger come to any one of our loved ones. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, God, for every leader in the gospel of Jesus Christ, in the kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for the body of Christ. We thank you, Lord, for divine protection for every preacher, every teacher, every leader. God, we thank you, Lord God, for every born-again believer. We thank you for every follower of Christ. Lord God, we ask you, Lord, for strength and resiliency and diligence, Lord, in this end time generation. Father, we ask you, Lord, for divine protection over all of us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that are on the front lines, whether in the medical field or whether in the field of winning souls for the kingdom of God. Oh God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the healing of the nations. We thank you, Lord, for those that are rebelling against your love. Lord, we ask you, God, to turn their minds around we ask you, Lord God, to heal their minds in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, for forgiveness of their sins, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to turn them around, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that they can become a believer. We thank you, God, that they can become a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, you use any and every one that is available. You can transform anyone that is available. You can change the mind of the most worst of the worst, Father. We ask you, God, to touch right now those that are rebelling against the kingdom of God. We ask you, Lord, to change their mindset. Turn them around. And then use them mightily, Lord God, to draw in nations. Hallelujah. Oh God, we just bless your name tonight and we thank you, Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that's going to come on this broadcast tonight, everyone that's going to come on the replay. We thank you, God, for every person, Lord, that will hear what thus saith the Lord tonight and that will believe and will receive. Bless them. Lord, anoint them afresh. Give them the newness of life that they need. Give them the strength and the revival in their spirit that they need to continue in this journey, Father. Let them not be discouraged or faint-hearted. In the name of Jesus, give them boldness and courage, including myself. Lord, let us stand up for the, the righteous cause of the kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the strength. We thank you for the, for the diligence and the willingness, to, Lord, to stand for the kingdom of God and the righteousness, peace and the joy in the Holy Ghost. We stay positioned in Christ. We stand up for what's right. And we just bless your holy name, Jesus Christ. Touch everyone on the sound of my voice. He heal them, heal their family members, all their prayers that they have before you for their loved ones and friends and families. Lord, hear their prayer tonight. Hear what they're asking tonight. Give them what they're asking tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to the Most High God. Good evening, Sister Brown and Sister Black. God bless you. Glory to the Most High God. Thank you for coming on. May the Lord strengthen you and give you all that you need. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you. We're going to go into the word of the Lord tonight. And we're going to look at bread. The focus tonight is bread. The bread of life. And how Jesus told us a lot about bread in his word. We're going to look at John chapter 6. Where he talks a lot about bread. And we're going to look at that. Hallelujah, the bread of life and how Christ used bread to symbolize God sending him down as the bread of life. Hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord. 
Good night, everyone, in the background, and good night to everyone that's here with me on live. God bless you. Let us go into the word of the Lord and hear what the Holy Spirit is going to tell us and reveal to us tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good evening. Praise God. God bless you too. Sister Black and Sister Brown, good evening to you. God bless you too. And it's a pleasure to share with you. It's a pleasure to be able to share the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. And I love you too. God bless you all. John chapter 6. Hallelujah. God bless you. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee which was which is the sea of tiberius and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased these people were following jesus because he did miracles they were following him because of what he did they didn't understand about faith yet they didn't understand about salvation yet they didn't understand about belief yet, but he was patient with them. And, th and they watched him heal those that had diseases. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. He saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus had compassion for the people. They were following him and watching him. And he had love and compassion for them. He wanted to know how they were going to eat. They followed him all the way up into the mountain. And he was concerned about them being hungry. And he asked his disciple Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that we may, that these may eat? He want to know how can we buy enough bread to feed all this multitude of people that is following Jesus. And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. He was testing his disciples to see where their mindset was, to see if their, their hearts was right. To see if their eyes have been opened yet. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. That every one of them may take a little. Now he was looking at the, the amount of money that he had. And he was saying, we don't have enough money to feed all these people, Jesus. I'm paraphrasing. And he said that. Everyone could take a little bit, but it's not going to be enough. So he said 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? Now, Andrew knew that there was a, a little boy that had some fish and some bread. But he said that is not going to be enough to feed all these 5,000 people that's sitting there hungry. That's another disciple that was doubting the power of God. Hallelujah. Now they had already seen that he had done miracles and, and signs and wonders, but they were still having doubt. Now, he talked about the, 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 the boy that had the five loaves of bread and the two small fishes. And in verse 10, he, and Jesus said to them, make the men sit down. Here he's going to show them and prove himself again to them. He told them, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. That's a lot of people. And Jesus took the loaves, 
those five barley loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Now out of these five loaves of bread, Jesus Christ told his disciples to go, go feed 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two small fishes. Jesus gave thanks right before the people. Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish right before their eyes. And they were able to feed 5,000 people with a minimal amount of food. He did that to show them that he has the power from on high to manifest miracles. Hallelujah. There was so much that there were fragments that were left over. And he told them to gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. And that's symbolic of lost souls. Gather up the lost souls that nothing be lost. There's always a revelation in the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, they gathered them together, the fragments that was lost on the ground that was left over. There, they gathered them together. And filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Now, everybody ate, and they had many, many baskets left over. Because Jesus had expanded that bread and made it more than enough. He made it over and abundantly enough to feed more than 5,000 people. Hallelujah. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did right before their eyes, said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. They started to believe because they began to see Jesus doing miracles after miracles. How can he take bread and make it feed 5,000 people and have many basket loads left over? Hallelujah. Verse 15 says, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Jesus had to keep hiding away in mountains and caves because the Pharisees and the scribes were out to get him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to stop him because he was becoming powerful before the people and the people were beginning to to believe they began to follow him more than ever and they were not paying attention to the scribes and the pharisees no more because the scribes and scribes and the pharisees didn't do miracles the scribes and the pharisees didn't co didn't perform healing and deliverance on nobody all they gave was burdens all they did was ask them for for money to put in the, in the synagogues and robbing the people. Hallelujah. Now verse 16 says. And when. Even was now come. His disciples. Went down unto the sea. And entered into a ship. And went over the sea. Toward Capernaum. And it was now dark. And Jesus was not. Come to them. It was dark. It was at night. And these disciples was down there waiting by the sea for Jesus. But Jesus didn't come. He stayed up in that mountain. He didn't come to them at that time. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind and blew. So when they had rowed about five and 20 or 30 furloughs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. Here's another miracle. 
Jesus just came walking on the sea right to the ship where they were. And they got scared when they saw him. But he saith unto them, it is I. Be not afraid. He kept showing himself mighty and powerful and miraculous. And verse 21 says, then they willingly received him into the ship. They were anxious and happy to see him, but they were scared because they didn't know how he walked across the water. And they willingly received him into the ship. And immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Soon as Jesus got in that ship, that ship got quickened. And it was right there on the land immediately. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea, of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one whereunto his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. So now the people, they knew that Jesus was not in the boat with his disciples when they rowed away into the sea. But when they came back, Jesus was on the ship with them. And the people were wondering how Jesus got there with them. And they were marveling and they, they, were, they were amazed at what Jesus was doing. Howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. So some of them that had eaten bread with them on the other side of the sea, they also came following Jesus and his disciples. After that, the Lord had given thanks again. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. The people kept following Jesus because they knew he was miraculous. They knew he could feed them. They knew he could heal them. They knew he could make it better for them. And they were, they were seeking after him. They didn't know nothing about salvation or deliverance. Jesus was showing them. He was drawing them into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Verse 25 says, And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou thither? They wanted to know when did he come? How did he get over there? One minute he was at the mountain. Then another minute he was on the boat with his disciples. Then another minute he was at another part of the sea. And then he ended up on the land in another area. They were wondering how he was getting to one place from one place to another so fast, so rapidly. Because it was supernatural. He was supernaturally moving around and shifting around with his disciples and performing miracles and signs and wonders right before their eyes. Verse 26 says, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye ask me, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. See, they couldn't fool Jesus. Jesus knew that they were seeking him for the, for the fish and the bread. They knew they were going to get some food because some of them was poor and they were hungry, but they were hungry for the natural food. They weren't hungry for spiritual food yet, but he was drawing them in with the bread and the fish, the miracles and the signs and wonders. They kept following Jesus and seeking Jesus. Hallelujah. But they had the wrong motives for seeking him. They were seeking him for their belly. But he know that. And he kept on teaching them. And he kept on drawing them in. Because he know eventually they would become believers. Hallelujah. And he taught them. He said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you for he for him hath God the Father sealed. So he taught them. He know they had the wrong motives for following him. He know they were seeking him for the food. But he taught them as they came to him. And he taught them not to labor for the meat. 
not to labor for the, the meat that's going to go in their belly and come out and going to perish, but for, to labor for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. He was telling them to labor for him and that they're going to have everlasting life. And that, them, and that kind of meat would never perish. That kind of bread would never perish. Hallelujah. Then said they unto him, verse 28. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Because they didn't understand what kind of labor he was talking about. They thought he was talking about working in the fields or doing something natural. You know, getting a job in the earth. But he wasn't talking about that. Let us look at what he was talking about. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God. Now he didn't say works of God. They said, What is the works of God with an S? Plural. But Jesus said, singular the work of God Jesus answered and said unto them this is the work w-o-r-k of God that ye believe on him who he hath sent the work of God is for us to believe that the father sent the son hallelujah and we ought to believe in the Son. Hallelujah. That's the work. The work is to believe. To have faith in Jesus. They said therefore unto him. What sign showest thou then? That we may see and believe thee. What does thou work? So they wanted to know what his work is. They still didn't understand that his work is to believe in him. The work is to believe in him, to have faith. And they wanted to see signs and wonders, more signs and wonders, because that's what they were following him for, to see the signs and the wonders so they can benefit from it. Verse 31 says, our fathers did eat manna in the desert, because they, they trying to say, look, our fathers had miracles in the desert. God fed them with manna from heaven, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So they, they started saying that Father God gave them bread from heaven. And, and they wonder, what work are you talking about? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. He tried to tell them that Moses was not God. Moses didn't provide that manna from heaven. God provided that manna from heaven. Moses was a servant. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my father gave you the true bread from heaven. The true bread is Jesus Christ. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Jesus is the bread that God sent to give life to the world. But the world must believe in the bread that is sent from the Father in order to partake of the bread of life. Hallelujah. Then they said unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus told them he is the bread of life standing right before them. And he told them that if they eat of him, they shall never be hungry again. And if they drink from him, they will never be thirsty again. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believest not. They were standing there before him. He fed them. He did all kinds of miracles, signs and wonders and healings. 
and all they was thinking about was the physical things that they saw. They didn't understand the spiritual things that he was teaching them. That he is the son of the living God. The bread of life sent down from heaven to feed them. To quench their thirst. To take away their hunger. To give them everlasting life to everyone that believeth in him. So that they will not perish but have an everlasting life. Hallelujah. But he said they did not believe. Verse 37 says, all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. He said, anyone that comes to him, he will never cast them out. Hallelujah. When you come into the kingdom to Jesus Christ, he will never cast you out. He always said he'd never leave you nor forsake you right here. His word It's us that turn away from him, but he will never cast us out for I came down from heaven. Not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. He told them that he came to do the will of the father. And that he is the son. He is the bread that is sent to them. He is the drink that they must drink from. Hallelujah. And this is the father's will which hath sent me. That of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. But should raise it up again at the last day, he said that he will lose none of his, his servants that come to him, his believers. And he said he's going to raise every last one of us up at the last day. Hallelujah. And this is the will of him that sent me. That everyone which seeth the son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ said he will raise us up at the last day the resurrection and the life we're gonna experience that and the jews then murmured at him they got mad because they heard what he was saying because he said i am the bread which came down from heaven they they, they thought he was blaspheming they said what? looking at him like what you are the bread from heaven and they got mad and they would start murmuring, complaining and gossiping and causing a stir up amongst the multitude of the people. And verse 42 said, and when they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? They, they got an attitude with Jesus. Jesus, therefore, answered and said unto them, murmur not among yourselves. He was hearing them in the spirit. He knew all things. He heard everything they said. He saw their attitudes, their behaviors. He saw them getting angry and upset for what he said. He saw them trying to cause division as he was bringing in the multitude and gathering the multitude together to become believers in his kingdom. Here was the Pharisees and the scribes here trying to cause that division, trying to cause those people who were about to believe, trying to get in the way. But Jesus set them straight. He said, no man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. He said, if the father draws that soul to him. Hmm, he said he will raise him up at the last day. So there was nothing that the scribes and the Pharisees could do to stop him. It is written in the prophets and they say, and they shall be all taught of God. It is written in the prophets. And they say. All, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man. Therefore that hath heard. And hath learned of the father. Cometh unto me. Those that are true believers. Will come unto Jesus. Because they are drawn. By the Holy Spirit. The Bible says. If I be lifted up. I will draw all men unto me. And that's talking about Jesus. Jesus already was lifted up to heaven and the word says that he will draw all men unto him. The father will put it in their heart to be drawn to the spirit of his son. And he said, not that any man hath seen the father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the father. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the father. Because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And when you set your heart 
to face the Son, you will see the Father and the Son. You will see the Holy Ghost. You will see them all in the Word. You will see them all in the bread of life. Because he will reveal himself to you through the Son. The Father will let you know him through his Son. Through the touch of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Verse 47 says, Very, very, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. When we eat of the bread of life from heaven, we will never die because we will have eternal life. Hallelujah. Through Jesus Christ. He is the bread of life. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And Jesus Christ did it already. He gave his flesh to die on the cross and be crucified, hung, bled, and died. He gave it up. As a lamb to the slaughter. So that we could have eternal life. He is our bread of life. Hallelujah. He gave of himself. So that we may live. Hallelujah. And, Jew, and the Jews therefore strove among themselves saying. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They did not have spiritual understanding. Their eyes did not open. They did not believe. Their hearts were hardened. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Except a man be born again of the water and the spirit of Jesus Christ, he cannot be born again. And except a man be, be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That's why these scribes and Pharisees didn't understand and they couldn't see spiritually. They didn't have no understanding because their, their hearts had not received, their hearts had not believed in Jesus Christ. So they had not received his spirit in order to gain that understanding and their eyes were open. You must receive and believe. That Jesus Christ shed his blood on Calvary. That Jesus Christ was crucified for you and I so that we can have eternal life. Whosoever eat of my flesh and drink of my blood have eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. Every born again believer is going to be raised up at the last day. For my flesh is me indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He's telling you his body was the flesh that was broken. For you and I. And he told us to do this in remembrance of him at the Lord's Supper. That's why we do the Lord's Supper in the churches. Because the, the, the bread represents the body of Jesus Christ, his flesh, that he let die on the cross for us. And his blood that was shed on Calvary when we drink the juice. When we drink that grape juice, we're drinking that in remembrance that Jesus Christ shed his blood. For us on Calvary. He said he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. If you are in Christ he is in you. Hallelujah. As the living father hath sent me and I live by the father. So he that eateth me even he shall live by me. Hallelujah. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Hallelujah. These scribes and Pharisees could not understand what Jesus was talking about. But he told them plain and simple. 
everything that needed to be said about him being the bread of life for the world. And those that eat of his bread and drink of his blood, hallelujah, will be raised up at the last day. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Have a wonderful week. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you. Continue your walk in Jesus Christ. Continue to, to eat his word. It's the bread of life. Drink it. Eat it. Let it be in you. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord. This is our daily bread. And forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, Lord. Thank you, God, for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray that those who are not believers, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will come into the kingdom, that you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you will believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, that you will confess Jesus Christ as your Lord with your mouth and believe in your heart that he rose from the grave on the third day. Come into the kingdom. Be saved. Hallelujah. Eat the bread of life. Drink the blood of Christ and live. God bless you. Gentle Breeze Worship Ministries thanks you for coming on once again. And have a wonderful week. May the Lord strengthen you and bless you this week. And bring you through every situation that you will be faced with victoriously. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen and amen. God bless you. I love you. And God bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Bishop uh, Curtis Sims, for coming on also. God bless you, Sister Norma Brown and Sister Claudette Black. Thank you, and may the Lord strengthen you. And I hope you were encouraged and built up and edified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Good night. Amen.